Are you there, Tom? Morning, Greg. Hi, Mike. So you are doing the Wisconsin Green Party thing, huh? Uh, apparently, uh -huh. I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. And you know, I, I uh, feel like you're we're so so responsible too. When I was gone, you know, you ran the whole meeting, and you know, today again, you got it up and running for us. So. Really appreciate that. Oh, no trouble at all. I, I, I may skip next month. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it would only be fair if you did take a month off if you wanted to. But you did talk about, um, you know, doing know. the global greens thing. So, uh, um, that is true. But, you know, we also have, um, and I think you also, had some input on the um, Black uh, Manifesto, Black Education Manifesto. Oh, yes. Yeah. So those are our two choices for next time. Um, Tom also has a connection on the Black Education Manifesto that he met. I can't remember where, but he was very impressed with her and thought she might be a possible speaker for us. Uh-huh. Good. How are you today? Not bad, not bad. Got a reasonable night's sleep. Uh, watched uh, Fahrenheit 9-11 last night, so I'm kind of pumped. Oh, okay. Did you ever see Zeitgeist? Uh, no. That's a really good movie about, uh, well, it's, it covers spirituality, but it also covers the 9-11 thing. Hmm. And uh, I don't know if I ever, I probably didn't tell you this, but, um, but um, two times in my life I've been sleeping in the same bed, in the same uh, part of the room, and um uh, either half asleep or fully asleep or whatever. And this smoky word was written in the air. And one time it was zeitgeist. And so I thought it meant, you know, so I Googled zeitgeist and it's actually a progressive uh, movement, you know, like the Green Party. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought, well, I must be supposed to connect up with this zeitgeist movement, you know? But um, I tried doing that and it just didn't come together, you know? It was just one of those things that it just... Went poof. Seem, yeah, it didn't seem to uh, move forward. And then uh, quite by chance, I ran into this zeitgeist movie, which is an old movie, but uh, wow, unbelievable. Hmm. As far as what's in it. I'll have to look it up. Yeah, it's great. How's Jeanette doing? Uh, pretty well. Uh, uh, not a whole lot new, but uh, she uh, she's reading this book about uh, Buckminster Fuller and geodesic domes that just came out. She was fairly excited about it. So nice. And I had to, I, I had to, to drag her copies of the whole earth catalog from, uh, from our attic. This oh, morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I used to have that. 
I don't think I, I might still have it actually. It's pretty old by now, as far as what's yep. in it, it's hard to access anymore, but maybe now you never know. <laughs> hard to access. It might be still a lot of stuff available. You never know. Yeah, there, 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 there weren't any websites back then, though. So it's hard I to know. find. I know, it was such a great resource. <laughs> that reminds me, I have an intentional community directory. And I just thought, I wonder if that's online now, because that would be so up to date then if it was online, probably. Uh, I bet some some sort of version of that would be. I think so. Might even be stuff in Wikipedia. Right, yeah. I suppose I should share the agenda. Oh, maybe I shouldn't share that yet until we get people on. Could be an interesting uh, meeting as far as people showing up because Tom is traveling and uh, Barbara's not available for this meeting. Huh. Well, Bill should be here. Uh, he's back. I don't know about anybody else. Where was Bill? Uh, Bill went to his uh, son's wedding in California. Oh, fun. He was out there for a week. Well, I don't know how fun California is these days. I suppose it depends on how close you are to the fires and the droughts. True, true. I, I I don't think he was, but uh, I forget where 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 it actually was because yes, California is a big place. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we can maybe get the scoop from Bill. <laughs> Feet on the ground in California. Indeed. I met a man from California about two months ago, I would say. And he was saying how he missed California and blah, blah, blah. There was like four of us there and a couple of us were like, did you even want to be in California now? <laughs> it's like, well, that's a good point. But he had moved here to be with his partner. And uh, uh -huh. you know how that goes, or at least I know how it goes. I mean, sometimes it's, I've never done it, but I, I've seen where it doesn't, you know, it can create a little bit of uh, tension about why am I doing this? You know, like, does this meet my personal needs or am I just meeting my partners? You know? mm -hmm. Yeah, it's always, relationships are always complex. Yeah, they're a lot of work, but, you know, it's, uh, I don't know. It's a compromise thing, you know, and uh, some people believe that, no, we shouldn't compromise. We should just live our full, you know, potential. But I don't know how that fits into like, you know, living in a tribal kind of a way, which is what I believe we're supposed to do. I think we're supposed to be tribal animals. It could be. Just in the whole vein of, you know, how we all bring something to the table and, you know, 
no man is an island kind of a thing. It's yeah, we all help each other out. Right. At least that's how it's supposed to work. Right. I've been uh, rereading Brian's letter and I highlighted certain parts of it to share at the meeting because the, you know, like for instance, he says, as far as the postal unions goes, the problem is that the majority of union leaders now are under the illusion that Biden will stop the joy and uh, Biden will only move under mass pressure. It should never be forgotten that Biden is a finance capital comprador. He's from Delaware after all. The banks in particular own him. The privatization of the postal service will make his benefactors billions. Uh, true, but not exactly to the point. Uh, It's, yeah. Yeah, and he gets, uh, you know, he says there's something where there's great public support, the Postal Service. This is something where there's great public support for all kinds of members of our class could be recruited to defend the U.S. Postal Service, including union workers, students, immigrants, migrants, women, LGBTQ people, workers of color, et cetera. Mm -hmm. not, uh, not to mention rural folks. Yeah, just for us, it'd be an opportunity to build unity within our class. We could show that with the 1970 postal workers strike, it's been black and other oppressed workers historically in the United States that have helped white workers the most materially and spiritually, not the right wing. And he says it could be a massive coalition. So as far as not being to the point, what do you see there with that? I, I you know, I, th I, we, we, the two of us have different analysis of, uh, of union leaders per se. Uh, Most, you know, to to my mind, mo most union leaders, uh, it, it's kind of it's kind of like the 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 situation with 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 people like AOC, where the the higher up you get in the hierarchy, uh, the the easier it is to forget your roots, where you where you come from. Mm -hmm. And you get and you get wrapped up into all of these little these little games that uh, union bureaucrats and and, and uh, democratic politicians always get into, which is they wind up supporting uh, instead instead of instead of the Democrats being as advertised the party of working people <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, you know yes you do get wrapped up into these uh, you know the, the the corporate ownership of these parties mm -hmm. and and but you still think you're doing the right thing <laughs> right. So it's it's complex and, and you, union, but uh, you know I've been I've been in many fights in my years in the union movement and uh, against bureaucracy and but but still uh, maintaining a core uh, identification with the union as a, as an institution. I'm not sure necessarily that uh, uh, Brian's party uh, has a good sense of that. Is Brian with the workers party or what? 
workers' world, yeah, or uh, or 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 parties, socialism and liberation. They had a, the, those two organizations split from each other some years ago, and but uh, so I'm not sure which organization he's in, but uh, yeah. Yeah, he doesn't um, talk much about that, that I can remember. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they uh, they they often hide behind that uh, bail out the people movement thing. Mm. But hey, that's. You know, it, 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 uh, it, it certainly wasn't in any harm in uh, having him speak. And, ha and I'm, uh, I'm actually a little bit surprised that, that, that he did. Uh, and, but, you know, you got to take most things he says with a little grain of salt, at least. Yeah, it's good to know, um, you know, what party he's representing, because I didn't, I didn't know that, or that he's, you know, considers himself a member of. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we can start playing with this a little bit. Uh, we can, and uh, by the way, Tom was right. The recording uh, did, did w was already going when when I logged in. Yeah. So. So we don't have, we really don't have to worry about that at all. Great. So it's just the letting people in and logging in to start the meeting that you had to do? Yep. Thank you for doing that. He's offered to teach me to do it a number of times, but, you know, if I continue to say yes, <laughs> I just want oh, yeah. be able to do this. The stuff that I'm supposed to do, you know. <laughs> I'm already probably past that point. Okay, so as far as the recording goes, you can see my screen, right? Yes. Uh, let's see. Can we skip down to here? We can always do introductions if somebody else shows up. Uh, we'll come back to Green Party News. That's kind of fun. Uh, as far as annual goals go, yes, the, 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 the Canada election is on the twentieth. By the way, okay. And the and the German election is on the twenty sixth. Okay. Just put that in. So. I had an interesting conversation with Adam's son because he lives in London, Ontario, and he's a, he just started his own business about six months ago uh, doing uh, city planning. But he was a city planner for London, Ontario for, I don't know, five years. Hmm. And uh, so a friend of his wanted to start their own business and so that's what they did and it's going gangbusters so he's really happy um but i asked him if the green party candidate from <laughs> blessing you thank you if the green party from from london um had much of a chance and he said the he mentioned two other parties and he said they had things pretty sewed up in London, even though London was considered a conservative community. So apparently these two parties were not that conservative. So, so Canadian politics it has two dominant parties, uh, the liberals and conservatives. The conservatives now are are fairly right wing, but there's now a, a new party that's to the right of them, <laughs> which okay. surprisingly enough is called the People's Party. <laughs> okay. Well, he did uh, mention the liberals as one of the parties that has things sewed up. 
uh, I can't remember the other one. Uh, the, the other, the other uh, large party in Canada is uh, the uh, the New Democratic Party, which is basically the Labour Party. Okay, that might have been it. The NDC. NDP, uh, yeah. NDP, yeah. I bet that's what it was because it was three initials. I remember. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's them. And they're conservative. No, they're they're the Labour Party. They're uh, uh, come out okay. of so uh, they're basically like the Socialist Party here. Okay. Uh, Good 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 folks in general. Uh, yeah. So but he felt uh, but uh, they can but uh, our, bo bo both our party's strength, the Greens and the NDP, is in the is on the west coast in British Columbia. <laughs> Oh, okay. Which is kind of sad. <laughs> yeah. Good. Barb's here. Barb E is here. Oh, good. Hi, Barb. So we're going to have a meeting. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Barb. Hi. How is everybody? Oops. Good. We're um, talking about Green Party news. Um, so we were just talking about the Canadian election, September 20th. There's 253 green candidates running. Wow. Yeah, and the rationale for working for the Green Party for me is that it's an international party, you know, party of the world, which is, I believe, what we need right now. Yeah. So... Annual goals, I think, um, let's see. We're, yeah, we're a little bit behind. So we're going to get to annual goals that we're working on down below. Uh, the co-chair report, um, I did want to just read that quickly. So I worked with Mike on the agenda and other matters, uh, contact with Barbara reviewed the July meeting recording, email to Julie Enslow regarding the climate strike, minutes typed and sent to the list, uh, met with the outreach committee represented at 350 protests on Fridays, email 12 so far, very active global warming remediation organizations about the climate strike and networked with 350 to do an event here ordered and began studying all we can save book on climate crisis, contacted Monty and we worked on the Facebook announcements for our monthly meeting. Checked out line three website to see how we could support them. Worked with Tom to get the hard copy mailing database ready and take it to the printer. Checked out the Facebook page and group. Working group uh, for the picnic was me and Jennifer and Tom. And Jennifer and I worked on that. We didn't get to Tom because uh, I'll report on that when we talk about that part later, but uh, reached out to Brian Pfeiffer and Randy Bryce on the Postal Union thing, reached out to Sherman Phoenix, didn't hear back from them, shared all we can save with the climate protesters. As far as the August minutes goes, uh, Unless there's any objection, we can approve those. Are there any stand asides? Any blocks? Then I think I'm hearing all yeses. So the minutes are approved. Uh, Treasurer's report. Did you want to give us that, Barbara? Mark? You there, Barb? Barb, are you muted? I was on mute. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to grab the statement. Um, here it is. So in our savings, we have $670.86. In our small business checking, we have $581.45. And I did send, um, finally sent a check to 
um, the Juneteenth uh, organizers, but I don't see that that cleared yet. Okay, uh, I meant to take that off of there. Sorry. Okay. All right. Any questions for Barb or can we approve the treasurer's report? Uh, so moved. Okay. Oh, I also want to mention I was contacted by Winston Cephas Jr. Uh -huh. um, oh. He was our previous treasurer, you all know. And there is some bit of business that um, still hasn't been transferred. I don't know exactly what that is, but I will be meeting with him sometime in the near future to find out and make sure that happens. Hmm. Well, let's hope it's lots of money. Right, <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, and, and, and not billions in fines. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. Okay, well, uh, any stand asides to approve in the report? Treasurer's report? Any blocks? And I think I'm hearing all yeses. And we can move on to, uh, well, we'll have to skip the bowling fundraiser because that's a um, Jennifer thing. If she's not here yet, if she's going to make it, great idea. Yeah, doesn't that sound like fun? Mm -hmm. I think we did yeah. one many years ago, but it's about time okay. we do it again. All right. Yeah, I'd love to do that. And she was suggesting that we. Um, well, I'll let her tell about it. Uh, membership committee report. Um, so basically what we're doing there is the, um, uh, bulk, this, uh, hard copy mailing and I'll report on that further down, uh, for the IT social media report, um, Tom is traveling to be with his family. So, uh, from the co-chair report you can see that, you know, he's, continuing to train all of us on various things. And uh, so he's been training me on how to, um, I have to go to the accomplishments thing, training me on how to use the database for printing mailing levels uh, and also uh, he did videotaping uh, at the climate change protest so that we have some nice video of that. Um, and, you know, Tom is pretty modest, but he is supporting not just us, but the state um, Green Party as well with IT and does a fantastic job, especially with availability. I can usually get a hold of them within a few hours and sometimes you know, it might take a day, but that would be very unusual. So, and I know the same is available for the state folks like that as well, so. All right. Elections committee report. Barbara is um, about six weeks out from having her baby. And she said she would not be able to make it here today, but we did an elections committee meeting on uh, Thursday, that was, I think, right? Uh, oh, oh, right. Yeah, so Thursday, and um, I'll just read this. Our elections committee is working on connecting with the Racine Greens to do canvassing there regarding the Green New Deal, a candidate to run against Robin Voss and starting a chapter. There's two people there that want to start a chapter. We'll be an all hands on deck type of committee soon because the next midterm election year is coming up quickly. In fact, people who wish to be local candidates will begin petitioning this December 1st. So- um, Could you re remind me where Voss's district is? Racine. Okay, thank you. 
Yeah, so um, I think that brings us up to the outreach committee report. And I am more. Okay, so last month we had proposed uh, at this meeting to send out a letter to potential coalition partners to see who might be interested in working on the on an anti racist Green New Deal. Uh, currently working on a draft of that letter that should be ready this week. Uh, we're also gathering contact information for the groups to send the letter to. Uh, if anyone has time and interest in gathering some of this information or wants to review the draft, uh, drop me an email at workingwriter at prodigy.net or just, uh, you know how to find me. Uh, I will, uh, I am going to put the link to our brainstorming document with, where we keep the list of potential partners and allies. Uh, I will put that in the chat momentarily. And uh, that's my report. Thanks, Mike. And uh, can, uh, can I bring something up that is sure. related? Certainly. Um, yeah. Has anyone heard of a place called No Studios? N -O -S? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Are we are we kind of connecting with them? I was just there last night for a story slam. Don't know much about it, but it sounds like a good place for us to be. This is a this is a a, a place that is founded and uh, and uh, funded by uh, the guy who who wrote Twelve Years a Slave a wow. couple of years ago, uh, who is from Milwaukee. And he's put and he founded the studio basically to uh, promote uh, creative arts and uh, uh, in, in uh, uh, communities of color. And yeah, it's a pretty cool thing. I don't know how we can directly attach to it, but yeah, it's definitely something that we ought to we we need to keep closer attention to you have you know why it's called no studio because that's the answer that most people get when they propose uh, to do something <laughs> i i as you were saying what you just said i it started to to come to that and I, and then it made sense but um <laughs> great yeah so it's it's art and activism is yes. what, yeah. So, so the event they had last night was a storytelling event, but it was co sponsored by Milwaukee Film. Um, that was the first time they collaborated um, in something. So, um, and just if, if anyone wants to go to the next um, story slam, it's uh, Deaf Stories on September 20, 25th. And it's at Anodyne Coffee on Bruce Street. And what's the name of that place again, Barbara? No Studio. Knows, so N O S Studios. It's on McKinley. N O S what? as in Sam? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't quite sure how to pronounce it, but now. Oh, wait a minute, there's no S. It's just N-O with a line over the O and then studios. Okay, great. It's at 1037 West McKinley. Nice. So right so in the middle of the, uh, it's part of that, the Pabst district, the new uh, development there. Yeah, that's a nice area now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, great. So art and activism, huh? Yeah, yeah, very cool. Yes. Okay, um, what I do you will, think? And I'll post a link, if I, since oh, I found great. one. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thanks, Mike. I'm, I'm glad somebody else had, had heard about them. And now I know a little more, mm -hmm. at least how they got their name. That, that was bugging me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so there's nothing new with the volunteer job opening. So we, as a group, do know about those. Um, we were going to have a discussion about changing our meeting to the first Saturday, but I think uh, we would probably need more of a quorum than we have today for that. What do you guys think? Right, so. Yeah. Although if uh, if that's one of the reasons we don't have very many people, <laughs> because it's yeah. a bad day, we would know that. So. Good point. <laughs> well, uh, we do have time to discuss it among ourselves. So, um, you know, the floor is open. I, I think it's certainly worth a try. I know I'm not doing formal stack stack procedures, but it's just the three of us. <laughs> yeah, and that's why I'm not taking a stack because with just yeah. the three of us, I think we can handle it. <laughs> Uh, I, have an, I have another meeting on Sunday, the second Sunday of the month. So the first Saturday would be good for me. So great. I don't have two things on the same weekend. Yeah, and it works just fine for me. So, you know, um, I'd say so far we have 100% uh, <laughs> agreement. <that. laughs> yeah. Well, plus whoever proposed the idea. <laughs> Right, yeah, there were actually, Tom proposed the idea, or at least it's been run by Tom, and I'm trying to think who else talked about that. I don't think it was Barbara, because uh, she would prefer a weekday meeting, and that's just, doesn't seem like that's ever going to happen. We tried pulling the membership and everything about that, and that just didn't fly. You mean a weekday? A weeknight, yeah. Yeah, yeah weeknight. A weeknight. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right, well. I'm excited about her baby. I did not know that. Yeah, she's six weeks out. You didn't know she was pregnant? No, I, I mean, the last time I saw her was with the, um, uh, you know, the, the school board campaign, which was what? last fall last winter last spring last spring yeah last spring oh my gosh okay or so, well yeah. yeah it won't be long now that's exciting yeah so um as far as our team building team skills goes um we are almost done with our uh see here well you know when we're doing our team building team skills um come on video there we go so when we're doing our team building team skills we're looking to have these four components fairness concern effectiveness and pleasantness. And uh, we are almost Oh, somehow I got kicked out of there for a minute, hmm. but I'm back. <laughs> oh no! And here's the <laughs> here's the that managing dynamic complex change. So the last thing on here is the resources and personnel. This box right here. Mm -hmm. that we're going to cover today and then we already have our mm -hmm. game plan so we are bringing about 
change. But as far as resources and personnel goes, I think that what we could do is each uh, share something about like what we feel we have as resources, first of all. Um, somebody want to start? I have already uh, forgotten what the question was. <laughs> OK. Uh, what are our resources as the Greater Milwaukee Green Party? What resources do we have? Oh. Well, we do have people sometimes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, we do. Yeah, and, and they're smart and organized. We have. I'll take that as a compliment. We have connections with other um, activists. That's a resource. Something else you wanted to add, Mike? Uh, we. I'm trying, trying, trying to make a, a generic point about we have websites and we coordinate uh, a wealth of information. Uh, we, we share information amongst ourselves and with the community quite well. Mm -hmm. Or with the, within our limited circle, at least. Where is this letter? Um, going. You you you've got you've oh. got Brian's letter. Uh, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to share that. <laughs> oh, I, uh, I, I, there was someone. a typo in there. <laughs> it said lot last members instead of lost members. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> can make a correction. Where where is that supposed to go? <laughs> You'll see. It comes up later on. Oh, okay. Um, it, but, it's something we got, not not something we're sending. <laughs> oh, right, okay. yeah, yeah, it's not <laughs> something right. of ours. Huh. Uh, thanks, Mike, for that clarification. <laughs> okay, so um, also with resources, I think we um, we have some really good um, technical um, yes. ability in our groups and. Yes. Uh, technical training that that helps us to keep on top of things so yeah, i think that's goes to tom again he's yeah does amazing things and he's helping us learn more yeah and it's a good segue to personnel um so you know obviously we have good it support and personnel um anybody else want to mention anything we have for personnel Well, that um, the elections committee is very um, active and has has been doing a lot as long as I can remember, getting um, people to run and getting helping with campaigns, making us more visible in the community. Yeah, I'm so glad you mentioned that, Barb, because. Um... You know, I just feel like since Barbara took over that role, it's just been something that we've needed at the state level and at the local level. In order to be a political party, we really needed a, a strong leader for that committee. And, you know, we've had one uh, for a while now. It's such a blessing. So I agree totally. Thank you for noticing that. And uh, anybody else? Go ahead, Barb. Well, I just wanted to mention that um, along the same lines as Mike was saying, the information that we that we share 
Um, when you mentioned at the beginning about the Canadian elections, that's not something I've been following, but it, I really like knowing that. Did you say 250 candidates, green candidates, something like yeah, that? Yeah, more than that, I think 258 or something, where is it? Wow. And 253 they, candidates, yeah. When do they have their elections? September 20th. Oh, really close. Can you see my screen? No. Nope. I see your face. <laughs> oh, okay. I didn't share my screen and here I'm thinking everybody's <laughs> able to see what I'm doing and they can't. All right. Hi, Carrie. Oh, hi, Carrie. Hi, Carrie. Hi there. We're doing the... Um, Five minutes for our team building team skills. And um, since you didn't get a chance to participate, we're just talking about what we have as far as resources and personnel. Um, so we just got done talking about how we have a strong elections committee since. Uh, Barbara uh, Dahlgren has taken that over, both at the state and the local level, which has been something we needed. Um, you know, in order to be a political party, we needed strong leadership in the elections committee. Is there anything you'd like to share um, before we move on, Carrie? We're about done with this topic, but um, you know, as part of our, our managing dynamic complex change, it's actually the last component of that. Um, so resources and personnel, um, anything you want to share on resources and personnel that you think we have as the Greater Milwaukee Green Party? You know, um, I appreciate the thought, but, but no, thank you very much though. Okay. All right. It's time to move on. So, oh, in the chat, just sometime during the meeting, um, before we do move on. We've been talking about how do we help someone to cool down? So that's the interactive part of this team skills, team building today. So if you could put that in the chat, but put it only to me and then I'll share it at our next meeting. The ones that are appropriate because you know, someone might say hit them over the head with a club and that would cool them down, but obviously we wouldn't share that. So just sometime during the meeting. Uh, okay, our educational component today is kind of a working meeting thing with the climate strike work. Um, we did get the book that we ordered, All We Can Save. And I wanted to share just a little bit out of that. So this is all women writers. 60 of them, yeah, 60 of them who are <laughs> leaders in the climate uh, activism area. And this little part is how to talk, or this section is how to talk about climate change, which we've talked about before, you know, if we're gonna have some impact on how to do this climate change stuff, we have to know how to talk about it because for a lot of us, it can be kind of frustrating. Like why aren't more people, you know, forcing this issue, right? Mm -hmm. And so Catherine Hayhoe talks about how to talk about climate change. And she says 73% of the people in the United States agree that the planet is warming according to a poll conducted by the Yale program in climate change communication. And 62% of Americans recognize that the main reason for this warming is human activity, specifically burning fossil fuels, that's about three quarters of the problem, and deforestation and agriculture, that's most of the other quarter. Uh, she says, our biggest problem isn't skeptics who perpetuate the idea that science is somehow optional or a matter of opinion, 
It's that when it comes to supporting climate action, the urgency just isn't there for many of us. 73% of us also believe climate change will affect future generations, but only 42% think that it will affect us in our lifetime. So that's what she's saying is the problem. Only 42% of us think it's gonna affect us in our lifetime. And so, you know, not uh, making it a priority. And then she talks about why we need to find common ground. So what she's saying is that if we want to talk to somebody about climate work, what we need to do is find common ground with that person. She uses the example of a skier that she ran into. And, you know, she was able to use the fact that, you know, the snow caps and stuff like that are going away. And, you know, the snow is all melting. And so, you know, and she was actually married. She is actually married to someone who was a climate denier. So she also uses that as an example of how they got to the point where now, you know, they're both on the same page with how they need to work on this climate situation. So I definitely recommend this book, All We Can Save. Uh, we bought it, the Green Party did, Greater Milwaukee Green Party. And if you want to use it, you're welcome to it. And I uh, have been sharing it with the climate activists at the 350 protest every Friday. And this time there are nine of us there. And we've been using these signs that say honk for a livable planet. And I think we're probably driving Wells Fargo and Chase Bank crazy because people are really starting to lay on their horns a lot down there. So that's been a lot of fun to get all that support. All right. Uh, let's see what else is on here as far as that goes. So climate strike work, all we can save in round eight. And then uh, Fridays for the Future is calling for the climate strike on 924. And so on 924, we will have our climate strike signs down there. And the, like I say, this protest has been building down there. so. I think uh, it's. I think it'll be inspiring for anybody that can make it, and a lot of fun. Um, but we will have strike signs down there for the first time, so that'll be fun for me. Barb, uh, Barbara Dahlgren is making those, and uh, yeah, we'll be in front of the Chase and Wells Fargo banks on the corner of Water in Wisconsin. And let's see. So open for discussion of, and also work, um, ideas, uh, whatever, on uh, the climate strike. Pass. Uh, so Greg, so, uh, so, so basically what's happening on the 24th is basically just another uh, uh, rally at the banks. Uh, yes, and uh, I'll uh, I'll uh, keep a stack now that there is four of us, just so that we're respectful to each other. Uh, so, the what happened was uh, Julie tried reaching out to the schools, and the schools because you know the Fridays for the Future is a youth movement that was started with uh, a climate a strike every Friday and not going to school, right? Uh, is how uh, Greta Thunberg started doing it. And so this climate strike, you know, one of the things I wanna talk about is what we can do as far as the strike goes. But to answer Mike's question, uh, so Julie Enslow reached out to some of the schools and some of the activists that participated in the last climate strike which was quite large and fun. 
And um, the result was, you know, the schools don't have enough bus drivers, so they wouldn't be able to bus the students anywhere. They wouldn't be allowed to do anything on the school grounds because of the COVID thing. Um, it would be too dangerous, they felt. So the teachers were unwilling to take that up. Um, and as a former teacher, um, I can't even imagine trying to organize something during this pandemic. Um, you know, it would have been hard enough to put it together when things were normal. And uh, during the pandemic, I can't imagine even pulling that off. And that's what the teachers were basically saying. It just seemed like a real impossibility. Um, I was wanting to just stand across the street from a school and have like, uh, you know, strike signs and that kind of thing. And uh, I couldn't get enough interest in that. Um, we did talk about doing something at the city, is it called city market? The market? The public, the market. public market. I always want to call it city market. Thanks, Mike. Uh, yeah, the public market. Across the street from there is a little tiny park. And for a while, Julie was talking about moving the demonstration that we do on Fridays over there. Hmm. But I think, uh, you know, if that's what happens, we'll be notified in plenty of time about it. But so far, I think it's just going to be in the same place. But uh, the Greater Milwaukee Green Party is going to be putting more of a strike fo uh, focus on it instead of, uh, you know, uh, 350's focus is divestment. So mm -hmm. regardless, we're getting a lot of support these days from the people that are passing by and that's a very busy place in uh, Milwaukee. So I think we are, we'll be lucky if we last time, which was yesterday, there were a lot more police cars going by. So I think because there was so much horn honking and stuff going on, I think uh, probably Chase and Wells Fargo were complaining to the police. And uh, so the police were buzzing by back and forth, this and that. Yeah, so that was uh, interesting to see. And they don't seem to harass us anymore. Um, so that's really a good sign. I think maybe the police are even getting on board with the whole thing about, you know, we need to do something about this, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, what did I say about, so, floor is open on, on sorry. good question, Mike. Anything happening in Waukesha, Carrie? Um, on, with regard to what specifically, Greg? The climate strike on 9-24. Um, not that I'm aware of. Okay. So. There's a great, um, Bright Green Lies has got a Q&A this afternoon that I'm hoping to attend. What was that again, Carrie? Um, Bright Green Lies. Uh, there's a Q&A um, for the, the, the film and the book. There's a um, Q&A this afternoon that starts at six. And did you say Bright Green Lies? Bright Green Lies, yes. Uh, Derek Jensen, Lear Keith and Max Gilbert's book on the climate crisis. Oh, interesting. Oh. I didn't hear about that one. Oh, I've been posting about it in our Milwaukee Greens page. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't get a chance to look at that much. Did you say Bright Green Lives? L -I -B -S? Lies. 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 Okay. That's what I thought you said, but then I thought, well, Bright Green Lives makes more sense. 
<laughs> me. <laughs> that would be more inspiring for me. Well, yeah, do you want to report back to us on that? That would be great to hear what happens. Um, sure. Okay, I'll put the, on the, that on the agenda for next month then. Um, anything else on the climate strike? Anybody think they'll be able to attend? I'll be there mm -hmm. for sure. And I'm pretty sure Tom will be there. I haven't got asked him specifically, but. It's, is it at noon? Yeah, noon to one. If it was later, I might be able to do it, but. I think that's too early for me to get there. Kind of hard, huh? Yeah. I'm working on, on reducing my work hours, so eventually maybe I'll be able to get in on it. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay, so next time in our uh, educational component, we will either have the Black Education Manifesto. Uh, Tom ran into a resource on that and Mike has some resources on that. And then uh, Mike also has offered to put together something for us on the Greens, Global Greens Battle, the Global Climate Crisis. Right, Mike? Yep. And so whatever, um, you know, whatever comes together with that, we'll have one of those for our educational component next time. Anything else before we move on from the climate strike? All right, so announcements. Anybody have anything new that they would like to announce that's not on our list? So what's new on here is our book came, All We Can Save, Truth, Courage, and Solutions for the Climate Crisis by 60 Women Climate Crisis Leaders. Um, so, and then, uh, let's see what else. When we went to the Medicare for All protest, which uh, Bill, Mike, and I participated in that march and rally. Um, one of the Assembly Democrats publicly thanked the Green Party for our work there, which was nice. That was awesome. Who was that? Well, we're trying not to say who it was because <laughs> we it's don't want to give him too much credit. Yeah, because. Uh, some of the Madison Greens might, might actually run against this person, so. Oh, okay. Uh, and then uh, what else? Oh, we just wanted to, or I wanted to actually uh, give credit to the marshals uh, that did that. The Party for Socialism and Liberation uh, were some of the marshals that helped with that. And then the American Civil Liberties Union was not marshalling, but they were witnesses for the safety of all the people that participated in that march and rally. So that's always comforting when uh, we have them there to make sure the police don't get out of hand or some other threat to our uh, safety doesn't happen that isn't witnessed. All right, anything else on announcements? Going, going. Done. Okay. Oh, do I need to reimburse you, Greg, for that book? Yeah, I'll be sending you a receipt on it. Also, uh, okay. you'll see some other expenses from um, the hard copy mailing that we're doing as we proceed. Uh, let's see, coalition updates. 
So Barbara can't be here today, Barbara Dahlgren. So she represents us with Poor People's Army and um, get the lead out. And Bill uh, represents us with the Biden Cuba blockade. There's blockage for some reason there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see. So she'll update us in October, Barbara Dahlgren. And let's see. You can make your own strike signs too if you want to come on the 24th. Is, is 350.org uh, still Zooming? Did you say, are they still doing that? The, the Zoom meetings? Yeah, they still do Zoom meetings, yeah. Is that third Thursday of the month? Second no, Tuesday. Host. Yeah, second, second Tuesday. Oh, second Tuesday, okay. Yeah. Um, are you on their list, Barb? I, I, I will check. Because they, they send out a monthly uh, email. <laughs> Uh, been... Sometimes more than that. Okay. Yeah, sometimes more than once a month is what you're saying, Mike? Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as 5G update goes, um, we have some nice flyers on that. And Tom has been on the ground kind of watching the towers that are going up over in his neighborhood. And that area, which is Bayview. Um, it says most towers seem to be Verizon. So I was going to ask you guys if you want to boycott Verizon. And any questions about the 5G thing before we move on? Well, I don't know that much about it. I, I just learned that there's there's a 5G signal and then there's an, a 5G phone. They're different things. Cause I was sent, um, I'm with Credo and they, they are asking me to update my phone to be a 5G phone. I don't, I'm not, I don't understand um, the difference and, and I, I don't even understand um, uh, the the opposition to the 5G it's a signal I'm, I'm guessing right yeah the the opposition well you know all cell phones are operated on microwaves okay. and so the more we the more we up up the ante on that the more intense those microwaves are so we're kind of like being microwaved you know, not kind of like we definitely are being microwaved. <laughs> and so the 5G phones actually up that, the electricity it takes to do those is like 10 times as much as the other phones. And so wow. you'll notice when they put up a 5G little tower, like in our neighborhood, they're putting them up and they look like a light tower. I mean, a, a street light. They're not even a big tower. They're just like a street light. And uh -huh. you'll see the, the little antennas on the top. They look like little, they almost look like a three ring binder. They're about that yeah. size. But if you look down the block a little ways, you'll see a new electrical thing. Ours has two meters on it. So they're putting in all this new electrical, uh, you know, voltage in order to power these things, which take like 10 times as much power as. So obviously that's not good for global warming as well as, you know, you want to be microwaved. So there's where the health risks come in. We had a wonderful speaker that came and spoke to us about this, Julie De La Terre. And uh, I just talked to her last week actually uh, about this. So we have Wisconsin for Safe Technologies. If you wanna um, look at that website, um, 
that will update you, Barb, on, you know, what's going on with that. Okay. And there's also a national group. Um, they just sent me an email to, uh, I think it's Americans for Responsible Technology. So art, yeah, it is. Americans for Responsible Technology. So um, is it, do you, do, do you know if, if upgrading my phone is, is helping perpetuate that? I'm guessing so. Yeah. And I don't, I don't quite understand the whole thing. Yeah. And if you want to <laughs> talk to somebody about it, I would say talk to Tom about it, unless anybody sure. here at the meeting wants to share more about that. We do have a little bit of extra time. Oh, Carrie just sent a link. Um, yeah, Anybody I, else on the 5G I'm gonna, thing? I'm going to talk to Credo about it because they are generally, uh, you know, an act, it's an activist phone company. So, and climate is change is one of the things that they focus on. So I, I'm surprised if they would be supporting something that um, moves us further in that direction. So, okay. yeah, there was the Bank of America. So they're not my phone company anymore. And uh, the reason, um, you know, I'm trying to get away from Bank of America too with my working assets credit card because they, when I try to get an answer from them about if they invest in fossil fuels or not, Bank of America, mm -hmm. they refuse to answer and, you know, now they stopped sending me statements for my credit card. So, you know, it's, uh, oh. and Credo's with Bank of America, so. Is that, have they always been with Bank of America? Yeah. Yeah, it was through working assets, yeah. Oh, wow. Hmm. Okay. Anybody else want to share anything on that or? Um, Hearing nothing, we can move on to, um, Mike, can you give us a little bit of background on the Constitutional Convention, seven states thing? Ooh, very, very little, but <laughs> I'll give it a shot. Uh, for decades now, uh, the right wing has been promoting this idea uh, of uh, uh, of having another constitutional convention, uh, it mostly started uh, in the uh, uh, anti-abortion rights movement, uh, but a lot of other uh, right-wing movements have been have been involved in this. And what it what the the uh, the Constitution provides two ways for constitutional amendments to to uh, to happen. Uh, the first way is that it is to have it is to have Congress uh, pass constitutional amendment in two sessions and then and, and then uh, send it to the states. The other. Uh, uh, which is exactly how constitutional amendments have been uh, ratified and done for uh, all of them, all the life of the Constitution. But the Constitution also provides for uh, s state legislators, like legislatures, to call for new con for a new constitutional convention, at which uh you know the the entire constitution can be rewritten that's actually how our constitution replaced the articles of confederation back in this uh 18th century but anyhow so over these past decades and this has been decades long i want to say it started in the 70s uh in part because it comes out of the anti-abortion movement uh, so they've been collecting these state legislatures and, 
as Greg reports, they're up to 43 now. Or no, 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 no. Uh, you need two thirds of the state legislatures to uh, to call a uh, to call a, a constitution convention, and so and so that would be thirty four, thirty five, and I guess they're up to twenty eight, which is a majority, but not two thirds yet. Uh, I do not. Wisconsin is not uh, on the on the list yet, and, and and there's no action that I'm aware of uh, to do that. But I guess you know it's it, it's worth keeping an eye on. Uh, that's the extent of what I know. Thanks, Mike. That's very helpful. Appreciate it. Any questions on the Constitutional Convention? Why that? Why we might want to keep an eye on that? Okay. I think you did a good job, Mike. Nobody has any questions. All right. Uh, so line three. This is another money thing, Barb. So. We haven't been able to get up there, uh, anybody from the Greater Milwaukee Green Party. And as far as I know, I haven't heard anybody from the state saying that they traveled up there either. So Winona LaDuke is a former vice presidential candidate for the Green Party. She's one of the leaders of the resistance for line three, one of the indigenous leaders. And uh, she was our vice presidential candidate when Ralph Nader ran one of those times that he ran. In 2000. Yep. Yeah. What did you say, Mike? I'm sorry. The 2000 run. 2000. Okay. And so, um, yeah. So, as far as I can see, other than going there, uh, one of the ways we could participate would be to donate money. So I'm proposing, because that's what we're supposed to do. I'm proposing that we donate money to the line three action. And um, the floor is open for discussion on that. Uh, Greg, is there a particular organization, either uh, Honor the Earth or is if there's a uh, a fund to support the the, dem the demonstrations altogether? Yeah, I put a link here. Um, it's the Stop Line Three. Ah, okay. Uh, I am not. Oh, uh, there's a link there. You want to put it in the chat? Uh, I can try. I've never done that before, but can't be that hard. It's copy so based. Here's the donate. Ah. You guys can see my screen, right? Yes. So donate to legal support for water protectors. Support ah. the frontline camps. Join the fight is the thing we can't do. I think we can probably, um, I'm not sure if we can donate. Yeah, so we could donate to even these frontline camps individually. Um, you know, if somebody had like a specific group of people that they wanted to support. Wild rice protectors. How do you decide who to get to? Well, we can just give um, to the... the main uh, how do I go back on here? Uh, it's a document, oh, I think so. if you just, you might just have to close that window. Uh, the, the link tree is, is in this tab next to it. 
What, what did you say, Mike? The the link tree is in the tab next to its left. Over here. Uh, at the top. All the way to the top. Uh, to the yeah. right. Oh yeah, yeah, I see. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so, and this is the donate legal support part. Right. So we can, we can, so, uh, so do we, do we just want to support the legal fund? And there's certain, there's reasons to, to support any or all of these. Right, yeah, so it's up to us. We are the four that get to decide if we decide to, um, donate money, we'll have to come up with a, a an amount and we'll have to, we don't have to, but uh, if we want to, we can decide, you know, if it goes to the front lines bails fund, if it goes to stop line three bail fund, line three legal defense fund, center for protest law and litigation, or defendant resources, or one of those camps the camps thing, I think, would be kind of how would you know, you know, kind of thing, unless you're really into the the rice, uh, wild rice um, issue. Um, so I pass. Uh, Go ahead, Mike. Uh, so, uh, Barb. Uh, what kind of amount would you be comfortable with as treasurer that we could afford? Well, I, um, I don't, I don't know what kind of expenses we have coming up, and we have not gotten any new memberships lately. So, um, I was even thinking to have people send a special donation to us specifically for this so we don't have to draw down our account okay uh let's uh, okay so let's do this uh let uh uh send out a uh, an, e uh, an email blast to uh, members and friends uh, asking for support for the line three protests. I would, I personally would like to do, to to find, uh, choose one uh, legal defense fund and one uh, campaign fund. Uh, one one of the, the the other ones, uh, and, and split split it in half. That so sounds that, like a uh, good way to go. Uh, and try to do that. Uh, uh, try try to get out the email blast. Uh. No later than no, no later than our next meeting. We so just would, would be... have to ask people to put in the memo stop line three. Yeah. So no, that sounds good to me. I, I know the 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 the, uh, the Ginny Cant Collective has been doing a lot of the. Uh, Groundwork and social media stuff. So I uh, uh, maybe I just simply because I know the name, uh, perhaps uh, uh, I'll throw that in a motion too. So the is motion it? is the motion is to send out a send out an email blast uh, via uh, to members and supporters of who you know whoever's in. Uh, on our list uh, to uh, to support the, the the fight against line three, uh, 
uh, with the financial contributions uh, to uh, through the Green Party, uh, the Greater Milwaukee Greens, uh, that the uh, you know, donations uh, contribute uh, contributed uh, via that fund campaign uh, be split between the Ginny Collective and one of the legal resources. Okay. That's my, that's my proposal. Um, right. to add, Go ahead, Carrie. I just wanted to ask if anyone has spoken with either um, Winona or Barb with or Paul Demain or any of the people that are actively involved in that effort, um, what their needs are what their greatest needs are at the moment. Um, as far as I know, no one has, Carrie. Um, if you wanted to do that, though, that would be great, you know, because it would be, it fits right into what I was going to propose um, after we dealt with Mike's proposal. Um, because I think there is like an immediate need so I think, um, you know, the sooner we get something to them, the better. So if you wanted to do that, that would be great. Well, I'm, friends with, I'm friends with Barb with, um, I could, I'd feel totally comfortable reaching out to her and asking and um, I could do that, you know, today and see, um, get back, who, who would I report that to? You can report that to me and then I will, um, you know, just forward that information. We'll do that as a proposal too, after we deal with Mike's proposal. Um, and then, um, and then we'll, we'll deal with the fine tuning on it. Okay. Okay. Very good. I'll, I'll reach out to Barb today then, and I'll let you know. Okay. Just hold on a minute. Okay. So Mike, um, you want to restate your proposal so we can approve it or not okay uh that we uh send out a fun fun pitch a uh, special fun pitch for the fight against line three that we encourage people to donate to the to the line three efforts uh through the through the greater milwaukee greens uh that we split the contributions uh between the Ginny collective and one of the legal support uh, funds. Okay, and are you trusting? Um, well, does anyone have uh, um, preference uh, with these legal support funds? Where's the Where's the Ginny Collective? I don't didn't see that. I'll show it to you. Okay. You see it now, right oh, here. Uh, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but you know. Okay. And there's a donate here button for that, Barbara. When you do it. Sure. I was gonna put the link into the chat. Um. So. Uh, as far as Mike's proposal goes. Uh, we need. We also would need someone to do that. Actually, to send out that email. Um, so, do we have a volunteer to do that? If I didn't have two writing assignments in front of me, mm. I I would volunteer. But <laughs> I do. Okay. So, if we don't have a volunteer to do that, then we need to. Uh, table that until we have a volunteer that's willing to do that. All right, Carrie's motion uh, proposal actually. Um, so Carrie's proposing, go ahead, Carrie, and restate what you're proposing that we do. Um, I would, would suggest that we reach out to um, Barbara With or um, Paul Demain or both and ask them what their most urgent needs are at the moment and report okay. back to Greg about that. Okay, and um, you know, that's up to you um, because when you make a proposal like that, 
if you're willing to reach out to both of those people, that's fine. If you only have time to do one, that's fine. Um, you know, I think that's what your proposal is, right? Uh, yes. Okay, great. Thanks for uh, putting that out there, being willing to do that work. And um, do we have any stand asides on Carrie's proposal? Any questions or discussion? Any blocks? All right, so I'm hearing all yeses, Carrie. So you can just um, report back to me on what you found out and then I will forward that. Actually, you could just report that right to, to Barb, what their immediate needs are. And then we will um, have to do one more thing. We have to approve an amount. Now we have about, uh, with our checking in our savings, uh, Barb, I think we have about $1,100, right? Yeah, that sounds about We yeah. should never touch savings. So I'm gonna propose that we send them $50. Um, because I believe from what I'm hearing with what they're putting out, their needs are like immediate to stop mm -hmm. this. So um, can we have some discussion about that amount or alternative amounts? So would um, the amount sounds fine, but um, would I write the check to? Well, we will give you that um, once we get it from Carrie. She's going to find out what their immediate needs are. Okay. And and and, and where to send. So this is a, an alternative to um, your suggestion, Mike. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Sounds good. Carrie, are you okay with sending that information to Barb? Uh, sure, I'd be happy to. It just I'm looking at this website here, and it seems like. Whatever, um, I'm assuming that this would be digital transactions. I don't know that it would be sending a check. We can only do sending a check. So I think they'll be okay with that if you can. Okay, get the so I, have, I would have to clarify where to send a check to. Right, and yeah, so get the address and stuff for Barb and. Uh, okay, and, and the name. Thank you, Carrie, for being <laughs> willing to take that on. Yeah, thanks, thanks Barb, so for handling our money. <laughs> Glad to do it. Barb, what is your preferred method of communication? Do you want me to call you with that information or send an email? Mm -hmm. Do you have a preference? Actually, a uh, text would be good. I think you have my phone number. I, I'm pretty sure I do. Why don't you check? Because that way I'll, I'll have the spelling correct. Isn't your phone number listed in almost all of our um, party business I know my, stuff? I know my address is. Ah, okay. Let me, sure let me check phone my number. phone. Hold on. So, um, I think we dealt with that proposal, right? Or do I need to ask again for that? Oh, we need to deal with the amount. So are there any alternative amounts or do I have um, any stand asides, blocks or further discussion on $50? Sounds good, Greg. Okay. I'm just so, confirming. I just I'm confirming that I do have uh, both a mobile and a home number listed for Barb in my phone. Great, thank you, Carrie. Oh, you're very yeah. welcome. Yeah, thanks, Carrie, for doing that work. Okay, and we can move on. So, thank you guys for making that happen for line three.
Um, so we're having an interesting um, situation happen with the whole postal service. They have two unions and the unions are populated a lot by like a very diverse population. Um, and that population is a big part of the middle class because those are good union jobs. And this is a national, two national unions. And there was a lot of hope that Biden would get rid of DeJoy, the head of the postal service that Trump appointed, but he hasn't done that. And Ooh. so it's, really, yeah. So it's really looking like, um, you know, with the upcoming midterm elections, we could be in some deep doo-doo if we don't put some pressure on him um, to get this done. So I'm gonna share a little bit of a letter from Brian Pfeiffer. He was our guest speaker. Was that last month, Mike, or the month before last? I think it was the month before. Okay. So this is Brian's letter. Um, responding to my questions, because Brian's involved in union stuff, um, I wanted to ask him what he thought about how we could deal with this. He says, the problem is that the majority of union leaders now are under the illusion that Biden will stop to joy. Biden will only move under mass pressure. It should never be forgotten that Biden is a finance capital cop comprador. He's from Delaware after all. The banks in particular own him. The privatization of the Postal Service would make his benefactors billions. And that's all about what DeJoy is all about. It's privatizing the Postal Service. So that would get rid of the unions. Um, he also says, thus in this period, what's really called for our workers assemblies, which could, which could be specific as to sectors such as meatpacking or multiple sectors. And then he says, uh, this is something where there's great public support for, and all kinds of members of our class could be recruited to defend the US Postal Service, including union workers, students, immigrants, migrants, women, LGBT people, workers of color and rural folks, as Mike was uh, saying. Um, and so for us, it'd be an opportunity to build unity within our class uh, we could show that the 1970 postal workers strike, um, it's been black and other oppressed workers historically in the United States that have helped white workers the most material and spiritually not the right wing. And he says it could be a massive coalition. Um, so I believe this is a big uh, opportunity for us to lead and really call attention to this. Um, so we've been talking about it in the election committee and we've just started to talk about it in the uh, outreach committee. And that's why it's on the agenda for today just to talk a little bit more about it. Um, any questions about this? Open for discussion. Well, I'm going to try to catch my mail carrier and, and ask um, him or her what they think, just to get a more, um, you know, personal uh, connection with the whole thing. Thanks, Barb. Good idea. I've been wanting to do that too, but actually I've been a little bit too scared to do it because from what I'm hearing, they're working a lot of overtime and things are not happy in their lives right now. So they always seem to be really stressed and really like rah, 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 just running around yeah. like crazy. Mm. So I've been afraid to ask the ones that can come in by our house, but if you're brave enough to do it, what can they do to you, right? They're probably not violent. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. You've Although heard of going the... postal. Right, right. That's what I was thinking. Good point, Mike. That did come from somewhere, didn't it? Right. 
Yeah, so... Um, they're very stressful jobs, but, uh, and, and yes, they're, you know, DeJoy has got them uh, in a situation where uh, they're being asked to work, work harder and harder uh, for uh, uh, very, very little uh, compensation, uh, additional compensation for all the productivity that they're generating. It's, 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 an, it's a nightmare. But uh, yeah, we have to support the postal workers uh, and whatever the, uh, whatever we can do uh, is, is a good thing for us to do. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, to me, it seems like it could be a great um, Green New Deal um, anti-racist Green New Deal uh, opportunity for us because a lot of those jobs uh, are held by people from diverse population. So, and it's definitely an attack on the middle class to eliminate those two huge unions. Any other discussion on that? Okay. Thanks, Greg, for keeping, keeping our attention on this. Sure. Yeah, it's exciting to me when these kind of opportunities come up. And I think that's what Brian's saying too is, you know, this is quite an opportunity because there's such broad support for the postal uh, service and the postal unions because of the postal service, I guess. Okay. Our next item is our um, development uh, activities to promote local party growth for the Greater Milwaukee Green Party. Here's another money thing for you, Barb. Okay. We're spending this like is crazy the good all of a sudden. Yeah. <laughs> this is actually to get money to come in, and we're actually getting there. Hey. Okay. So. Um, short term objective is a hard copy mailing. Uh, our labels quote is $37 from uh, Minuteman Press, which I think is outrageous. Can you imagine for 24 labels? These are just oh. labels that go on envelopes. $37. Like the ones you could just right. write on there if you didn't want to stick it on. <laughs> that kind of yeah. label, an address label? Yeah. Huh. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you have to send them a Excel spreadsheet. So it took me forever to learn how to do that. And then um, because I was really rebelling against it every way I possibly could. And then um, printing is done. That was $9 for 22 pieces. Uh, they're front and back, but still $9 is not cheap for 22 pieces. That's outrageous again. Yeah, that's like 50 cents a piece. Um, yeah. Stack. Go ahead, Carrie. I'm just wondering if anyone has a printer that can do any of those tasks from home that would be much, much cheaper. Yeah, um, the printing is done, so we don't need that done. And the labels thing, I hear what you're saying, Carrie, could also be done by a home printer if you had a good one. Absolutely. Absolutely. So if anybody, anybody, yeah, I don't know the Carrie's program. Um, years ago, I was involved in something where it's a, it's a mail merge where you, right? Is it still that way? You merge the um, Excel spreadsheet with something that prints the label. Um, go ahead, Mike. No, the mail merge stuff is is to put to put the name and address on the actual letter. But since the letters are already printed, oh, I I've got a it's not for the uh, labels, right? Okay, I, I've got I, I've got somewhat ancient label software, but it does the job. 
I can do it. Wow. Thank you, Mike. So does that mean we need to send the Excel spreadsheet to you? Yeah. Okay. All and right. Then, uh, and then I'll, I'll, I'll go. I'll go to go to Office Max and buy the labels. Okay, thank you so much. Because this I'll, is I'll, ridiculous. I'll, unless labels have been bought already. No, they haven't. Um, and you know, okay, yeah, that quote is just unbelievable. I think. Yes. And then we'll just purchase the um, envelopes, but I think that I think Barb might already have the envelopes. I think she had a box of envelopes. Barbara Dahlgren, I mean. Mm -hmm. And then um, return address labels need to be discussed. I might have a proposal for that. You guys want to hear it? Certainly. So I think what might be better than return address labels is it might be cheaper to just um, buy a, another stamper like. Um, here, I'll show you. Yeah, we used to have a stamper. We do have a stamper, but it's for our um, email. Oh, hmm. Well, so, so what address would we want on our return? Well, yeah, um, that's another thing. Um, <laughs> we don't have I a was, mail. Do we have a mailbox? We, we have don't. A mailbox? No, nope, yeah. we don't. And I was thinking that um, Bill, Bill might be willing to volunteer his address. No. <laughs> Unless. Uh, if, if he's doing, he because Bill's doing the mailing, isn't he? Bill's doing the mailing, but Barb's address is on the actual letter because we're asking for oh. people to mail their membership to her. Ah, okay. It well, might so be. Then that's the address we should use then. Yeah. That okay with you, Barb? Could uh, could we say care of me? Yeah. Yeah, it could so say Greater Milwaukee Green Party care of. Yeah. Barb Eisenberg. Sounds good. Does that sound okay? Yep. Okay. Thanks for volunteering your address, and I will get that uh, that. Uh, Stamper made. Um, Thank you for doing that, Greg. Sure. Anything else on that? I think, um, you know, it seems like we handled that pretty fast, unless anybody has any more questions or discussion. We'll be able to hand that over to Bill. Uh, the next item is just really an announcement. The city has this Milwaukee government climate plan um, website and it's asking you to complete like a two minute survey. So you get to influence the city on their climate plan. I wanna do that. Uh, and, and you know, I'm going to ask you to to paste that into the chat to to make it a whole lot easier on all of us. Yeah, first I should do this uh, front this uh, line three one into the chat. Okay, I'm mm -hmm. going to try this. Never done it before, I don't think. I've already done it. Just so uh, you oh. know, it's already oh, here. It? Thanks, Carrie. And here's the climate yeah. plane lit climate change climate plan link thank so, you Carrie. and if we want to actually use them we have to open them now don't we yeah you can open it now and save it then you wouldn't have to um do it later right you got options at least it gives you the option mm -hmm. what's the What's the Wisconsin Safe Tech? What's that one? That's the 5G stuff. Oh, okay. I've got a lot of work to do. Um, did, you, did you put that in, Mike? Carried it. 
Oh, thanks, Carrie. You're welcome. All right, so we are up to um, outreach options. And uh, we're trying to build diversity, right? So this Milwaukee protests on Facebook and the People's Revolution Milwaukee on Facebook have what's going on as far as protests and actions in Milwaukee. One of the ways we can build diversity is go to these protests if we can and wear our Green Party merch and, you know, talk to people about the Green Party as we're marching along, possibly. Any questions or discussion about that? Okay. So uh, that brings us to National Committee Report. And Mike, you're the only one that here today that represents us on the National Committee. Do you have anything you want to report? Uh, not at this time. I didn't prepare. I uh, didn't prepare one. Uh, things proceed. Uh, there's. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't really have anything to report. Okay, and that's kind of my fault. Um, I didn't have that on the agenda when we did the agenda meeting. I lost it somewhere. So, you know, you didn't know that um, I would be putting you on the spot for that. Um, uh, I apologize in any case. <laughs> so we're both very sorry on that one, guys. Uh, let's see, meeting with the Four Lakes Greens. Um, so, Mike is on the coordinating council and hopefully in the future, he will have the opportunity to talk to Dave about this is what we were talking about. Um, and if anybody else talks to people on the, on the uh, who belong to the Four Lakes Greens, we're kind of wondering where they're at and if they would be interested in this. Um, the idea I like best was Mike's um, to just try one meeting as kind of a beta test and see how that goes before we make more plans for, uh, or even more proposals to them about what we think would be, what we could do in the future with them. And some of the things that we could consider our, you know, a more social thing. So if you're talking with them, you could, whatever one jerks your chain, you know, a more social thing or um, like something very informal or a remote meeting, um, you know, any other options people want to discuss? Are we just looking to share um, information about what we're doing and what's working or because we can't really work together on things because I mean, that's, that's not something that seems practical. You mean as far as um, getting together oh. in person kind of thing, Barb? Oh. It says right there, sorry, cross share best practices. Never mind. <laughs> I was yeah, trying to understand just, the the purpose. That's a good yeah. idea. And that's just one person's idea of you know what it could be. Mm -hmm. uh, other people felt like it was, you know, maybe something that could just be like a picnic, you know, like a social thing. And whatever happens, happens kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So uh what we're doing now is kind of just brainstorming again about, you know, suggestions. So far, Mike's the only person that's volunteered to handle it. 
Oh, um, Barbara Dahlgren is in the Zoom waiting, trying to get in, Mike. Oh, oh, I stopped looking. There she <laughs> Yay. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Barb. Thanks for the push. <laughs> Is she actually in there? Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi, Barbara. Thanks for the push. I, I, I stopped looking for people in, in the room. So apologies. Nope. You, popped in, you popped in at a good time because we're uh, talking about meeting with the four leg screens. And um, it looks like where we're at right now from what I'm hearing from people is kind of assessing where the four leg screens are at. So whether they're even in a, you know, a good position to um, get together with us, whether through a Zoom or in-person picnic or, you know. So Mike has volunteered to talk with Dave about that. But if anybody else wants to get opinions from other four leg screens members, um, especially people that are on the coordinating council or, you know, whatever, um, that would be helpful. And we could bring that up again at our next meeting. Any questions before we move on or further discussion? Uh, well, this is a standing item on the, uh, on the coordinating council's agenda each month. So I'm sure it'll be brought up next Tuesday and Hopefully, we'll have an update from them to pass. Oh, good. I didn't know that, Barbara. Thank you. And, and I'll be putting putting that in my uh, local report as well, coming out of this meeting. Thank you, Mike. Um, and I don't know. Uh, you know, we kind of know what people in Greater Milwaukee Green Party suggestions were. So like, you know, anything from picnic style social thing to, um, you know, this cross share of best practices, um, but they might have some completely other ideas or, you know, so any other discussion before we move on? Okay. Um, so, Tom is working on this 9-11 um, thing. That's not why he's not here. He's traveling to be with family, but uh, that is something that he's involved in. I was suggesting Zeitgeist, the movie, as to me, I thought it was very educational about uh, the 9-11 thing and the corruption involved in that. Um, Ed Asner was a big, do people know who Ed Asner is? Oh, yeah. Okay. So you want to tell us a little bit about who he is, um, Barb, just in case somebody doesn't know? Well, he was he was uh, an amazing actor, best known for his uh, roles in uh, the Mary Tyler Moore show and a uh, uh, spinoff called Lou Grant, uh, playing a... Uh, news reporter, but he was also a great activist for lots of social issues and I believe environmental as well. Thanks, Barb. Um, was, go ahead, Mike. He was also the president of the Screen Actors Guild, uh, the, the, the Actors Union, uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, and was also uh, uh, yeah, very, very active in uh, uh, solidarity with uh, Central America in the in the 80s and 90s uh, against the, the low intensity war against Nicaragua and uh, in uh, El Salvador. Uh, all around great guy. Mm. Yeah, and the reason um... Tom put him on the agenda was because he was also a 9-11 activist, um, you know, trying to get the word out about the corruption in that whole situation. 
Um, and Tom also wanted us to know that New York City is locked down right now. So there were supposed to be a lot of 9-11 activities going on there, but because the city is locked down, that is not happening. And Tom will report back to us uh, about this because he's actually participating in some of these events uh, this weekend. All right. Um, Barbara, would you like to give the elections committee report? Um, there's not really much because I was the only one who was at the meeting. <laughs> but I can give a quick report about why I'm here so late. Um, I was at the Conservation Congress Environmental Committee meeting and that just ended. So I have some good news from there that we passed three citizen resolutions and one of them was our Green New Deal resolution. So awesome, um, awesome job for all the people who were voting on that earlier this spring and now it's gonna go to the District Leadership Council. The other two out of the four that were, um, that were on the agenda that passed, we had one that imposed stricter regulations on PFAS chemicals uh, in water um, and also in like they were, uh, they are doing fish testing and things like that too, not just uh, water testing, but also in our food that we eat. Um, and the other resolution that passed was avoid all new fossil fuel infrastructure, which is super important um, to stop building our um, new pipelines and new, um, new kinds of gas and oil infrastructure. So those three passed um, pretty much unanimously. I think maybe there was one person who said no. Um, and so all of those are going to go to the district leadership council, probably um, in the next few months. And those are all public meetings. So if anybody wants to come out to support, I'll um, try and keep pe people updated on that. But as for the elections committee, I don't really have anything new. <laughs> Pass. Thanks, Barbara. Can and, I um, just clarify, Barbara, the PFAS, avoiding fossil fuel infrastructure, what was the third? Uh, our Green New Deal that um, oh. I wrote and, and Dave presented in Madison too. And I think Joe Nathan presented it in Ashland County. So we kind of had a gunshot resolution and um, apparently they liked my argument this time because we've had some other Green New Deal things before, but this one was that the Conservation Congress itself would um, take a favorable position on a Green New Deal. Um, so hopefully- wow hopefully we can get that to the state ballot next year and, and see what all of Wisconsin thinks. So if the district leadership passes it, then it has to get the final okay from the executive committee? If the DLC passes any of these, they go to the statewide ballot next year so that it'll be voted on in all 72 counties rather than just whatever county presented it. Oh, so the, the executive council doesn't have to give a final okay? Not that I know of. Great. I know if it gets through the district, then it's, it's uh, pretty good. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Yes, thank you, Barbara, not, not only for writing that, but following through with it and bringing that good news to us today. Um, and, uh, just sorry, one more thing. Do, uh, do we are we still have an open seat in the Milwaukee delegation? Not not that I'm aware of. It was somebody did some kind of appointment, and I don't know how that was done. That's um, a good question because this that kind of stuff happens with the Conservation Congress, and nobody really explains it, or it's like a totally undemocratic and ridiculous <laughs> yeah there's been two years added to my term since they didn't actually have elections the last two years uh -huh. um and i know a lot of people have 
ducked out because they thought their term was going to be over. So I know that there are open positions across the state, but I don't know how they appoint anything or how that works. So I can try to and follow up on that. Um, we've got to have some rules about it, but the yeah, it is uh, technically a public lobby and can make its own executive rules top down about everything. So um, the other resolution that I had supported that's going to the rules and resolution committee probably this November or December, they don't have a meeting posted yet, but usually it's around that time of year, um, is about making the Conservation Congress more democratic in its organization. So hopefully uh, we can get that passed too, but I don't have um, as, as many friends on the um on that mm -hmm. committee as I do the environmental committee because I serve on it and I have for a couple of years. So um, I may have to do some calling and lobbying to uh, see, see, you know, put some feelers out there first. Pass. Thanks, Barbara, for all your work on the Conservation Congress. And thanks to you too, Barb, for, uh, you know, your interest in the Conservation Congress and keeping us involved in that over the years in your past service. Oh, you're welcome. Um, the, so I did give a little elections committee report and you can kind of see it here um, because Barbara's right, there was only her that could show up for the elections committee for Greater Milwaukee Green Party meeting. Um, we did have people show up the other night for Thursday night for the Wisconsin Elections Committee meeting. And I was able to go to that one. I normally wouldn't go to that one, but some of this stuff is very critical and we're basically working on the same things at the state that we're working on greater, at Greater Milwaukee Green Party. And so I went to that one and so did Tom and Barbara. And um, is there anything you wanna say about that meeting, Barbara? Sure. So Tom and I have been setting up these um, working meetings that are outside of our regular committee time so that because we have a long to do list to accomplish by next year to help us to, um, you know, be the most prepared that we can as a committee for any incoming um, candidates and things like that. So Tom and I set up some times. Um, that was the last one. I think that we're going to try and meet uh, pretty much like bi-weekly as, as much as we can to do things in Nation Builder, to um, create the paperwork that needs to be created, all of that kind of stuff. And the more people that we get involved, the lighter the workload is. So one of those things is like, I've been going in and working on the elections part of the Wisconsin Green Party website so that um, all of that information is available to candidates that are trying to reach out to us. And it's not like an enigma on how to, um, you know, join the Greens Elections Committee or join, uh, you know, the, the um, endorsement process, that kind of stuff. But also we're doing some outreach and, and that's, um, and one of those is, is about the Greater Milwaukee Green Party's um, effort to um, reach out to Racine. So uh, with that, I'll pass. Thanks, Barbara. Um, so we're getting close to the end of our meeting. As far as accomplishments and recognition goes, um, Monty uh, helped me to learn how to post our meeting on Facebook because they keep changing that. And so he showed me how to make that a featured post on our group. Now I have to do it on our, uh, on our page because we now have uh, events tab back on both our page and our group. Uh, Tom, training me on the use of the database for printing uh, mailing labels and um, videotaping us at the climate change weekly protest. Sam and Pam for showing up for the protest. Um, and that's 
uh, Sam Michaels. And Mike for sending out an email and an invitation and working on the agenda. Um, Bill for promoting, I mean, Barbara for promoting and leading the election committee meeting, uh, which we got quite a bit done. Thank you, Barbara. Uh, Jennifer worked on our picnic. She contacted two parks in Oconomowoc and uh, not in Oconomowoc, in Brookfield, where she lives. And it looked like we might be able to use either one of them until we found out that it requires a 50% attendance by Brookfield uh, uh, residents. So we might be able to get my father to go and we'd have uh, <laughs> Jennifer there and that would mean we could invite two more people. <laughs> so that didn't work out. <laughs> So we'll try gonna, anyway. Yeah, we're going to continue to work on that for this month. We'll try and get a picnic going in. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that. That was um, Jennifer's, uh, you know, ball to carry. So um, we, I, I might I can think of about. one other past member that lives in Brookfield. I don't know if I oh. can get him to come. <laughs> Bruce. Bruce. I think his name is Bruce. Oh, okay. I don't remember a Bruce, but Maybe I'm not, you know. not getting the name right. Rick. No, his name is Rick. <laughs> oh, okay. I think I know who you're talking about. But I, tall, yeah, I tall, skinny Rick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so we could invite another person then. That would be three <laughs> people that we could bring. Um, let's see. So uh, Jennifer's not uh, here uh, today. Uh, October's kind of iffy for a picnic anyway. <laughs> kind of iffy, yeah, right. But with global warming, I was willing to uh, give it a shot. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think Jennifer was too, but um, she's not yeah. here today. And she, she's, she would have to lead on that. I couldn't take that on to lead on it. Okay. So we'll have to let that slide, it looks like. Uh, and then Bill for reporting on the Cuba Coalition. Uh, partner events. Um, anybody else want to recognize anybody else? Uh, I definitely want to recognize Greg. Um, for those of you who don't know, he reaches out to me at least a few times a month to make sure that I'm on top of what I say I'm going to be on top of. And it's incredibly helpful. Um, and I really appreciate all that uh, that you do for this group here. Pass. Thank you, Barbara. Here, here. Second that motion. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Appreciate your support. That means a lot. Yeah. Uh, anybody else that uh, want to mention an accomplishment or recognition? Okay. Well, um, just because you weren't here, Barbara. Uh, I'll just tell you that Carrie volunteered to do a lot of things today uh, for us, so um, she'll be recognized next month, but thank you, Carrie, for doing all that. You're and, welcome. Uh, our next meeting, I did reach out to the Sherman Phoenix because I thought that would be a great place to have an in-person meeting. It's right in the heart of the city and it's a beautiful facility, but we don't even know if they have meeting rooms and they did not respond to me as far as I know so far. Oh. But if anybody else has an idea, um, you know, where we could have like a picnic or combination picnic, uh, remote in-person uh, meeting for October, we might still be able to pull that off. So just send your ideas to me and I'll see if Jennifer wants to do that if I get any ideas from anybody else. Anything else? Because we are at 1229. Well, I've been meaning to, um, to check out the, um, uh, the Phoenix. So if I get a chance to get over there and um, get any information, I will pass it on to you. Sure, and if you want to, I could even meet you there and we could have a cup of coffee or something. 
Okay. That's fairly close to me. Great. All right. Um, call to action. What do you think, Mike? <laughs> uh, all, always available. Thanks. So, uh, as always, raise raise your arms. <laughs> attached to the person next to you. <laughs> uh, we believe. We, we believe. believe. In alternative independent politics. In alternative, in alternative independent, independent politics. politics. And active responsible government. And active, active responsible, responsible government. government. We believe. We, we believe. believe. In the empowering of all citizens. And the empowering empowering of all, all, citizens. all citizens and communities to create the world we want. And, and communities, communities to create, to the, create world the world we want. We offer hope. We offer, we offer hope. 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 And a call to action. And, and a call, call to action. action. Green and growing. 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 Thanks, everyone. We're better this month. Good, good job, guys. <laughs> I like having it written. We have it written right in there now, so we don't have to. <laughs> yeah, it's tough otherwise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thanks for showing up, everybody. And um, we'll see you later, I guess. Thanks for volunteering, everybody. Everybody volunteered to do lots. So I appreciate it. Bye, right. everyone. Enjoy the day. You too. Bye. 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 All right. Uh, anything we need to deal with, Greg? I will. I will. Uh, I will add buying labels on uh, uh, onto my uh, to do list. You're going to send me that, and, and also the uh, uh, whoever wrote that little business on the of the for the for the uh g and d letter um what was the first thing mike uh, uh mailing labels oh yeah i will do mailing, I I, I will do mailing labels yeah so i have to send you that excel thing right away because that thing should go out yeah. All right. And uh, and then you said somebody wrote something. No, they. Uh, you you responded to to my email about the uh, the quote. Oh yeah, yeah. You didn't yep. actually include the name. <laughs> what I was asking for. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. All I said was yes because I will do it, but um. I wrote myself a note. I just didn't have time to do it before the meeting. No trouble at all. Okay. So uh, otherwise, that, you're good. otherwise I'm good. Okay. We'll have a great Saturday and uh, talk soon. I hope. Yep. Okay. Bye, Mike. Bye.